Fantastic. Thanks for joining. Maybe just give it another minute. Thanks for joining everyone. I think in the interest of time, I should kick off. Um, yeah, thanks so much, all of you, for your interest in learning how to validate the work of other methods, a crucial step in the whole process of, of mapping, uh, remote mapping for humanitarian purposes. Just to quickly um, give you an idea of the entire missing maps process. So um, the first step, of the missing match process involves remote mappers looking very closely at satellite imagery and tracing on top of that satellite imagery where they see features like buildings. I'm going to show you that quickly in a few minutes just to give you an idea what that looks like. The second step which I'm talking about today is validation, remote validation, and that's where um, more experienced mappers take a look at the work that's been done by those initial mappers so slightly more experienced mappers, look very closely at all the work that's been done. They check to see if there are any errors. They fix those errors. Um, and if the mapping has been done accurately and correctly in the first instance, um, it often means the validator just needs to check and approve the work. Finally, these checked maps are taken to the location, they're taken to the field. And Janet touched on this earlier. This is where local mappers add crucial details like street names, place names, and the locations, for example, of healthcare centers. That's the mapping we can't really get involved in because we're doing this remotely. Um, we're not uh, from the, the, those areas unless anyone is from Tanzania or the school. Um, the, the remote mappers, the bulk of them tend to come uh, from elsewhere um, and are using satellite imagery to map um, remotely, as I've said. So why validate? What's the point of validating? Well, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's a crucial step because it gives confidence to the humanitarian organizations that the maps they are using are accurate and reliable. Um, and here's the example I showed earlier. This is um, mapping that was done in the Cuzco region of Peru. Actually, what you can see here first, those red shapes, those red objects are the initial mapping effort that was made by another volunteer, probably someone very inexperienced. They didn't know what they were doing, really. And you can see that the mapping they did was very inaccurate. You can see the buildings that they drew were way too big. Um, and you can see the green shapes are the fixed mapping that was, that was the work that was done by the validator to ensure that mapping was accurate. And you can see how drastically different that is. Now, this is quite, a, quite an extreme example. Um, but what we're doing as validators is we're ensuring that uh, quality data ends up in the hands of the organizations that are using this data in the field. Um, it would have been a shame if uh, organizations in Peru had to use this, these red shapes here. It would have given them no idea where people actually live. Wouldn't have given them an accurate count of the number of buildings in that area. It wouldn't um, have given them accurate maps at all. So it's a really crucial step. Uh, this is this is just an image from the ground. Uh, these maps were then used to actually deliver oxygen to households. Uh, but we wouldn't have been confident in their in their quality unless they'd been validated. So effectively, what it is, I've covered this briefly, but validation is where remote volunteers um, double check the data. They take a look to check that everything has been mapped properly, that nothing is missing that things are tagged or identified correctly, and that features like buildings, roads, and waterways are, are in alignment with each other. They're in the correct positions. Now, to be a validator, it's best that you already have some open street map experience. So it's best that you already have some experience mapping an open street map. And on humanitarian open street map tasks in particular. Um, now, I'm going to kind of quickly run through what mapping in OpenStreetMap looks like um, at the start of the session, then I'm going to show you quickly what validating looks like. Um, my idea is that over the next 24 hours, some of you will practice mapping, and then some of you might think about starting to validate some of the work 
um, that's been done by others. Um, when you get to the point that you're finding it easy to spot the errors that other volunteers are making, and when you find that you're starting to fix those errors, then effectively you are starting to become a validator. You're kind of naturally falling into the role of, of validation. Um, and I think everyone's background here means that we're also well positioned um, to deal with geospatial data, to spot errors in, in map data. Um, so I'm confident of your ability here. More broadly, what is validation? The broad objective as well is to give mappers encouragement, is to help mappers improve their map mapping. We're all beginners at some point. Um, and when we first started mapping, we all make errors. I remember when I first started mapping, I made lots of errors. I made lots of mistakes, but I received a message from a validator. I received lots of messages from validators saying, you're doing well, but you could improve by doing X. So I was encouraged to continue like that. And that's a really important role as a validator. You're also responsible for catching um, mappers as early as possible in their mapping process. So you're trying to stop them. If they're making errors, stopping them from running away with those errors and making that error again and again and again. It's really important to um, encourage mappers, and that means being polite to mappers. So if, if a mapper uh, is inexperienced and they don't know what they're doing, they're making mistakes, be polite to that mapper. Um, be patient with them. Give them confidence to continue mapping. And if they're mapping well, thank them for it um, and encourage them to continue mapping. And the key uh, message to get across to, to uh, first time mappers, uh, beginner mappers, is that they need to focus on quality over quantity. Sometimes mappers can get kind of um, carried away with how much they're mapping and they can start mapping too much. And they can start mapping inaccurately um, and then the quality starts to, starts to drop. Um, ultimately, by encouraging mappers to slow down and to focus on quality, it will make your job as a validator easier um, because rather than having to fix people's errors all the time, you'll find that you'll just be approving their work. And this means that the, this map base can get, gets used in the field much, much faster. So how to select a project? Well, we've got a project already. Um, we're gonna work on a project together. I highly recommend you don't jump straight into validation unless you have validated before. Um, instead, I think this is something you should always do when you launch a project, just map a few tasks. That gives you an idea of what the actual mapping feels like. Okay. I'm gonna run through this step-by-step -step on my screen, but what I'm gonna show you is how to select a task to validate it. We're actually looking for light blue tasks. Once you're ready to validate, you're looking for light blue tasks. To start off with, you're gonna be lo looking for these translucent tasks. They are, they will appear effectively white. You're gonna be selecting those to map, okay? I'm gonna exit these slides now. I'm gonna run through this step-by-step -step on my own screen. So I've got the project which we're working on together. showing on my screen now. I'm gonna share a link to the project also in the Zoom chat here. Yeah. Two really important things to think about when you are validating. The first is that the data needs to meet the need, it needs to meet the needs of the organizations that are using this data in the field. So in this, in this instance, it needs to meet the needs of the Tanzania Development Trust, okay? So we have to ensure that, that the data quality meets those demands and needs. The second thing is that it needs to meet OpenStreetMap mapping standards. So OpenStreetMap is a web map, a bit like Google Maps or Apple Maps, but the difference with OpenStreetMap is that anyone in the world can edit it, okay? been around now for 16 years. Um, over time, more and more people have contributed to OpenStreetMap to effectively become a map of the world. I'm hoping you've all created accounts, uh, you've created OpenStreetMap accounts, and you've also logged into the tasking manager, the website that I'm looking at right now. You won't be able to proceed past this stage unless you can see your username in the upper right-hand corner here. 
try and follow me as I run through this process. This is the best way for you to learn. So as I said, two main objectives when we're validating. First, that it meet, meets the need of the humanitarian organization. This is Tanzania Development Trust in this instance. The way we can check that is if we select contribute in the bottom right-hand corner here, we see some instructions on the left-hand side. Now these instructions, will these will help you align with the needs of the humanitarian organization, which is asking for this data to be created. First off, note in the bottom left-hand corner here, we have types of mapping, and this is telling us that all we need to map are buildings, okay? Really crucial. The focus of this project is buildings. We don't need to map anything else. So when we're validating, that's all we need to check as well. So if you see roads, we're not gonna map those. If you see waterways, we're not gonna map those. The focus and the priority is buildings. It's not simply the objective to map everything we see in the satellite imagery, we focus on the features which are defined there. Again, thinking about the first objective again, we need to meet the needs of the organization which is asking for this data. So we look at the project specific mapping notes. We look at these instructions at the top. They tell us which imagery to use, which satellite imagery. We're told to use Maxar imagery. So whenever you're validating a project, actually, whenever you're mapping a project, irrespective of whether you're validating or mapping it, you need to read the instructions very carefully. They will tell you what to look out for and how to map the project. We're told to use Maxar imagery. We're told that if local mappers know, know how to add local data, that, that, that's effectively a priority. There's a tutorials here, which I recommend you go to after this session. There's a great tutorial here, which is also set up by um, crowd to map which is the uh, Buildings 101 badge tutorial, which I highly recommend you follow after the session. It's a great tutorial. The link to that is here. There's also information about the Slack channel, which you can go to afterwards if you have questions, okay? Here we get to the most important bit here. We've got information about mapping buildings. This is what we're mapping. We're outlining all buildings that we can see. Um, we're making sure that the corners are at right angle or squared for the sake of accuracy. Um, we're also told here that we're to, to tag all buildings simply as buildings. We can't know anything more using the satellite imagery we're gonna use. So we're gonna use a very generic identifier for all these buildings, simply building, okay? We don't know if it's a house or a school or a hospital or a shed or a chicken coop, we can't know. Uh, in the absence of that information, we use a generic tag, a generic identifier, we're gonna identify all of the things we're seeing as simply buildings. Okay, fantastic. There's also gonna be some round buildings and there's a short tutorial here demonstrating how to map round buildings. So if you wanna know how to map round buildings, you could, you could watch that tutorial, okay? Now, this is the area that needs to be mapped on the right-hand side. This is the overview map. It indicates the area that needs to be mapped. The area that needs to be mapped is split into a grid of small squares. Now, this is the power of the tasking manager. If you're not familiar with this, I'll describe what this is. The tasking manager splits an area like this up into lots of small squares, and that allows us to each select our own square in this grid and map it independently. And it locks that square when we select it, so no one else can come in and map while we're mapping it. So we can all select a square now to map, and this is what we should start doing before we start validating, we should all try mapping. You can select a square to map simply by selecting map a task. That's a red button in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Now, the first time you select that, again, check you're logged in. You won't be able to proceed unless you're logged in. The first time you select that, you will get a pop-up which asks you to to a walkthrough. If you first time you're ever mapping, you get a pop-up, select edit now, that pop-up disappears, okay? Now I'm gonna run through mapping really quickly because my assumption is that this is kind of second nature to you, um, but I'm gonna run through the steps of mapping in this editor, it's called ID, we're mapping an open street map. I don't think all of this will be familiar to you, so I'm gonna run through it. Well, I'm gonna run through all the steps, I'm gonna run through it pretty quickly because I wanna come on to validation a bit later, okay? So the area which has been des designated for you to map is described by this pink border, this pink boundary. So you need to focus all of your mapping inside of that pink boundary. And we've been asked to map buildings. So I need to look for buildings inside of this pink box. And to look for buildings, I need to zoom in. And you can do that if you're using a mouse by scrolling in with your mouse wheel. 
and I need to find buildings. And I can find buildings by keeping an eye out for three key giveaways when we're looking for buildings using satellite imagery. The first is that buildings tend to have a color difference between their roof and the ground surrounding them. So look for changes in color in the landscape. Secondly, buildings are tall, so they cast shadows. So look for shadows in the landscape. Thirdly, and this is not always true, look for straight edges. Buildings often have straight edges, so look out for straight edges. And I can see a cluster here of buildings which has not been mapped yet. And I can see another cluster down here that's not been mapped. And they are both inside of my pink box, so I should map them. And I need to map them all, okay? So to map a building, again, I'm gonna go through this really quickly, but this is fundamental. To map a building, you need to click on the area tool that's found along the top of the editor. You need to do that after you've zoomed right into the building you want to map. So let's start off with this rectangular building which has got a shiny, probably metallic roof. We're gonna zoom right into it. It's really important to zoom right in so you can map the building as accurately as possible. Once you've zoomed right into it, you then need to trace or draw the object. And you do that using the area tool that's found along the top of the editor. You click on the area tool that activates that tool. You then get a crosshairs. You position that crosshairs on any corner of the building you want to start drawing, and you tap your left mouse button to commence tracing. You then tap your left mouse button as accurately as you can on each corner of the building until you get to the final corner of the building. When you get to the final corner, you need to do something slightly different. You need to click once to add a corner, but then you need to click again on top of that corner to finish or seal the shape. So you're effectively double clicking on the final corner of a building. The whole shape should now flash. So now asking to be identified. We need to identify this object. It's a building. And to identify it as a building, look to the left-hand side of your editor. You'll see the building tag. And you can left-click on building. That changes color of the shape to light red. That color is distinctive for buildings on OpenStreetMap. Okay? So I've drawn it. I've tagged it. I've identified it. But there is a final step, which is really important, again, for the accuracy of our mapping. We need to square the corners of this shape. And to do that, you need to right click near the inside edge of the shape and select the third icon down, a little square icon. That snaps each corner into being perfect right angles, perfectly right angled. And that is a building map. It continues to flash red like that, but I've drawn it, I've identified it as a building and I've squared the corners. That's now mapped and it's mapped accurately. Let's map the next one here. So I can see another building here. It's not particularly clear, but I can see shadows on two edges. I can see straight edges. I can see a very slight difference in the roof color between the roof and the ground. So this is helping me identify this as a rectangular building. Again, I want to draw it. So I'm going to zoom into it. Always zoom right into them when you're drawing them. Select the area tool. Click once on each corner and you're tapping your left mouse button and double click on the final corner. Select building from the left-hand side and then right click near the inside edge and select the square icon to square the corners. Okay, so this is what we're expecting everyone else to do in the other room right now. This is what we're expecting Tom be, to be taking everyone through. Now I'm expecting Tom to be taking through everyone, everyone through this step much slower than I'm taking you through it right now. I'm taking you through it right now quickly because I need to come on to validation quickly. But please practice what I'm doing right now. It will give you an idea of what it's like to be mapping. If you're gonna think about validating, you need to know what it's like to be mapping for the first time. You need to know where errors come up, where issues can arise. Now, one common issue that happens when we've got buildings close to each other, like this is that um, first time mappers snap to existing objects. So if you're not zoomed up in enough and you're using the area tool and you're drawing a building near to an existing building, the existing building will glow. That means it's snapping or connecting to the existing building. Now, when we're doing humanitarian mapping, we have a, a rule, which is that buildings should never connect or overlap with each other, even when they're very close like this, okay? And I can see a gap here. Even if it looked like they were sharing a wall, we'd probably leave a gap between them. Now, in order to leave a gap between them, you must zoom right in. And this overcomes that tendency of this editor to stick. You see, when I click here now, it's not going to glow and it's not going to connect. Now, if I was to connect it, so I was doing it rushed and I was zoomed out, I was to connect it, you can see the connected corner is like gray. It's a kind of gray color. That means it's connected and this causes all sorts of trouble. If I now right click and square this, it warps the other building. If I try and move this, it really warps the other building. So this is why it causes all these issues. You must get around this by simply zooming right in. When you're zoomed in, you can click near to an existing building. It will not connect or overlap with it, okay? 
double click to finish that. Tagging as a building, square the coordinates, there we go. So please continue to map your square. Now continue adding buildings like that. If you come across a circular building, I don't think I've got any in my square. If you come across a circular building, there is a slightly different method for mapping them. It's very similar to mapping rectangular buildings. Let me just take you through it quickly. I don't have any, I'm just gonna pretend this circular tree is a circular building. Suspend our belief for a second. When you see a circular building, this is clearly not a circular building, it's very green. You'll see lots of green circular objects. Um, they will be, they'll be likely to be trees or vegetation. We're, most of the time when we're looking for circular buildings, we're looking for thatched roofs, so brown circular objects. You may see metallic roofs as well. They'll be lighter colored, kind of light gray. You won't see green roofs, um, though it's very rare. So if you see green circular objects, you expect that to be a tree, okay? But I'm gonna just show you how to map a circular object anyway for the purposes of demonstration. So again, steps are very similar. You select the area tool, you zoom right into the object. This time, rather than drawing around the perimeter of the object, you actually draw a triangle with the triangle touching the edges of the circular shape. You double click to finish that shape. You tag it as a building by clicking the building on the left-hand side there. And this time, final step, you right click near the inside edge and set the circularize option to snap it into a perfect circle. Okay, that's a map building. Now that is not correct, that's a tree. So I'm gonna press undo to get rid of that, okay. Next fundamental step of mapping, and this is what Tom is going to be taking everyone through in the next room, saving our work. So after you've added a few buildings, the number in the upper right corner of your screen, it's, it increases and it steps up. So at the moment it says four for me. That means I've added four buildings to the map. Okay, and I'm adding more buildings and it's increasing. It's now going to say five. That means I've added five buildings to the map. You add another building, it's going to say six. So that steps up over time as I'm adding these buildings, it's increasing, right? You need to keep an eye on that number. You need to keep an eye on that number in the upper right hand corner because when that number reaches 10, you should get into the habit of pressing save, saving your work. It's important to get into the habit of saving frequently because if your session were to crash or if you were to lose internet connection, you'd lose all of your hard work unless you saved. So to save your work, you press the save button in the upper right hand corner. Your map goes black and white. When your map goes black and white, you will see the save panel on the left hand side. Simply press the upload button in the save panel on the left hand side. You get a pop up with a spinning wheel. And when that disappears, your save button will go back to zero, which means you have zero unsaved changes. And from that step, either you could add more buildings in your square. For example, I've got more buildings here. I could continue adding them. Or if you are confident that your area was fully mapped, you are confident that your area was complete, as in given the instructions that have told us to map all buildings inside of this pink area. That would mean you're confident that all the buildings were mapped inside of this pink area and there was nothing more to do. Then you would look to the right hand side of the task data section. And this is where you mark your square as complete or incomplete. You can see it is asking, is this task completely mapped? It's really asking, are all the buildings inside of your pink box mapped? If you're confident they're all mapped, you would select yes and submit your task as complete. Now you don't have to submit your task as complete if you run out of time. Uh, if you've got a very busy square, sometimes squares take hours to map. Um, if you want to take a break, if, you, if you've got something else to do and you run out of time, you can always select no in response to this question, is it completely mapped and submit task as incomplete. Now both options won't be clickable unless you've saved your work. So I've actually run out of time now. I've run out of time. There's more buildings to map here, I think. That's probably a building there. I haven't checked my square carefully. There might be other buildings elsewhere. I haven't zoomed in and dragged through my square carefully checking. There might be more work to do here. So I'm gonna mark this as incomplete by selecting no. I'm gonna save my work, press upload. And once I've saved my work, I can then submit the task as incomplete. Now, when, when the other mappers, when the mappers in Tom's room are selecting yes in response to this question, submitting their task as complete, this locks their task, it then, awaits validation. So this is that's the stage at which validators will see this. Is when someone selects yes here, it's completely mapped and they select submit task, it then marks that task as ready for validation. Now, like me, if you select no and submit it as incomplete, that doesn't lock it and pass it on to a validator. It just unlocks the square. It makes it translucent again and someone else can map it later. Could be yourself, okay? So I've gone through the fundamentals of mapping there on OpenStreetMap in the ID editor really, really quickly. 
Um, and that's because I've now got about 30 minutes to take you through validating, which is really what we've come here for. I've talked about it briefly, um, but let's show you it in practice, okay? So the first thing is, let's go back a stage. When you open a project in the Tasking Manager, when you open a project in the Tasking Manager, this is what it looks like. When you scroll down, you'll see it says Teams and Permissions. And it says, who can map? And it says here, all users. And it says, who can validate? And it says here, all users. Now, this is actually very rare. Most projects are not like this. Typically, this would say, who can map all users? And it would say, who can validate only users who are at intermediate or advanced level? Which means you need to have made 250 change sets, 250 saves. I, show, I showed you the save process just a bit earlier. 250 saves on OpenStreetMap before you could validate a project. That's a way of saying you need to be of a certain quality before you can actually contribute towards validation. So it's always worth checking with a project whether you can actually validate the project. You can see which level you're at. If you click your username here and select settings, it shows you which level you're at. If you're beginner, intermediate, or advanced, okay? So that's the first thing to check when you want to actually validate a project. So I recommend, if, unless you've mapped a lot before, please continue mapping as I'm talking through this validation process. Don't attempt to follow me and start validating immediately. Although all users can validate on this project, this is a kind of a goodwill thing. We're expecting only people who are um, fairly experienced to be validating this project, okay? I select contribute. And again, this gets me back to the stage I was earlier. I can see the instructions on the left-hand side. Now, as I said, when we're validating, reading the instructions is super important because not only are you using the instructions just to map, which is what we were doing earlier as, as a mapper, but you're also the one enforcing those instructions. You're the one checking that those instructions are being applied. So you need to read these instructions really carefully when you're validating. You need to carefully go through these instructions. And as I said, crucial part of validating, validating is ensuring that what we're doing is aligned with the needs of the humanitarian organization, which is asking for this data. And the best way to do that is to read these instructions. These instructions have been written out by Tanzania Development Trust. They are asking us to do this, and that's the best way to align with their objectives. Read these instructions really, really carefully. Remember, you're going to be the one enforcing them, okay? Now, how do we actually validate? So the map, we're going to look at it in a slightly different way this time. Instead of looking for translucent tasks, these white tasks, we're looking for the light blue tasks marked ready for validation, okay? If you want to validate a task, you need to click on one of these light blue tasks and you need to select validate selected task. Now, if there are any JOSM users among us, this is where you would also choose to use JOSM, which is a more advanced editor. Actually, most validators do use JOSM because there's many more functionalities in there which make validation much easier, much faster. But you can validate using the editor I just showed you, ID Editor. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to validate using the ID Editor. So I've got ID Editor selected. I've selected a blue task, which is ready for validation, and I'm gonna select a validate selected task. When I select that, it's similar to before, it zooms into that grid square, okay? Now, this is different to before. Before, when I, when I went to that task, I saw there was some existing mapping, but most of the mapping hadn't been done. The buildings hadn't been mapped. It's because it was a fresh task. No one had gone into it yet. When you're validating, you're seeing a task which has been marked by someone else as fully mapped. So you should expect to see quite a lot of mapping already inside of that task. Okay. Now we've got to think back to the instructions again. The instructions have asked us to map buildings. So I need to check that all the buildings have been mapped inside of this square. Now the best way to do that is to zoom in. You might not see the buildings immediately. When you're zoomed out, um, OpenStreetMap hides the data. So when I'm this zoomed out, I can't see the buildings. It's only when I zoom in that they pop up, I can, they appear. And now when I zoom in, I can start seeing the buildings that have been mapped, okay? 
So I'm checking here, and these buildings seem to be mapped okay. They seem to have been, been mapped okay. I can see immediately some of them haven't been squared. This one hasn't been squared, okay? It's also overlapping with the other building. So when buildings haven't been squared, that should be a kind of warning light for you because the people that don't square buildings tend to be beginner mappers, people who just started mapping for the first time. So you need to check carefully that square, you need to check carefully the pink area you're looking at if you do start seeing buildings which are unsquared. We need to fix buildings which are unsquared. That's just one part of validation, okay? I'm checking these buildings. They seem to have been mapped, again, I could probably got an overlap here. This one hasn't been unsquared, so that needs to be fixed. What I'm doing here is I'm just going around and, and assessing this whole area. What I'm doing here when, as I'm assessing it is I'm looking for unmapped buildings. I'm looking to see how much work it's gonna to take to fix this area. So most of these buildings seem to be mapped. There might be another building that could be mapped there. I think there's another building that could be mapped here. But what I'm doing as I'm making this assessment is I'm looking through the square. There's another building that could be mapped here, another building that could be mapped here. So this mapper has missed a few buildings. This is very typical, okay? They might've been mapping in a rush. They might've marked their square as complete and not known that they marked it as complete. Um, they might have just missed buildings because they weren't very familiar with what they look like. Here's another two buildings, quite hard to spot. What I'm doing is I'm looking through this area and I'm thinking, how long is it going to take me to fix these issues? If you think it's going to take you less than 15 minutes, you should do what I'm going to do now and you should just fix up the issues in the area, map the remaining buildings and ensure that the square is really complete. and the data is to a good quality, okay? If you think it's gonna take you under 15 minutes to do that. If you think it's gonna take you over 15 minutes to finish the square, so if you think it's gonna take you over, in this instance, over 15 minutes to map all the buildings that haven't been mapped, fix all the buildings that haven't been fixed that need to be fixed up. If you think it's gonna take you over 15 minutes, then you should consider marking the square as not well mapped. And you can do that by looking to the right hand side and answer this question, is this well mapped? You can select no and submit it as not well mapped. Okay. I'm gonna come on to comments later, but if you do that, it's extremely important you leave a comment. You have to leave a comment. You have to say why that task was not well mapped. That gives guidance to whoever's gonna come and map that later as to why that area wasn't mapped or what needs to be fixed in that area. Now, just to say, I'm not going to do that because there's not much work that needs to be done here. Just a few more buildings need to be added. A few of them need to be fixed up. Um, I'm not going to do it. Uh, so I'm not going to add a, I'm not going to mark it as incomplete. I'm not going to mark it as not well mapped. Instead, I'm going to try and just finish the work that needs to be done here because I think it's going to take me under 15 minutes. Now this 15 minute rule is quite good to apply because you have to think of your time as very precious as, as a validator. There aren't many validators. There's many more mappers than validators. There are hundreds of thousands of mappers. There are only a few thousand validators in the world. So your time is extremely precious. If, for example, I open this task and none of the buildings were mapped, it would probably take me over 15 minutes to map this area. So I would mark this square as not well mapped and submit it. This would then unlock it and allow the wider mapping community to map it. And remember, there's loads of mappers out there. They're always ready to map tasks. So if you think it's going to take you a while mapping it, just kick it back to the wider community. And you can do that by selecting no, but remember to leave a comment. Now I'll come into that, come to that a bit more, in a bit more detail later. Now for me, I'm actually going to go ahead and continue to map this. Um, so some of this just needs to be fixed up. So this, for example, is an unsquared building. Okay, I can see that because it's just the corners are not at right angles. Okay. Now, the beauty of OpenStreetMap is that, like Wikipedia, when an, when an article is added to Wikipedia, it can always be edited. With OpenStreetMap, when an object is added to the map, it can always be edited. So this building that's been added by someone else, I can edit this, and I can do that by clicking on the object. The corners then flash, I can see the whole object. I can then drag the corners to better positions by holding down my left mouse button on them. So I can pull that corner into better position, and now I must remember at the end to right click on the object and square it. And now that's more accurate, okay? This looks like it's been well mapped, but you might wanna square the object. Sometimes it's not obvious if a building's been squared or not. That was actually unsquared, it's quite subtle. 
think it did actually just slightly square it then. Yeah, it did change the position of that slightly. So that was also unsquared. So worth squaring buildings, even if they appear like they are pretty squared. Okay. These buildings are overlapping. Um, and I can see that because the, the edges of them are overlapping there. Now that's an issue that needs to be resolved. When I click on one of them, it does tell them it's crossing another building. I can fix this by moving one of the objects. So I can right click on the object and select, select the move icon and just move it out of the way. I might then just want to move these corners into better positions to map it more accurately. Okay. So now there is space between the buildings and they're not overlapping. That's a bit better. I'm going to move this and move these corners in. I'm going to square it at the end. Okay. So I'm, I'm kind of happy with this cluster here, I think. That might be a building. I'm not sure though. I'm probably not going to map it as a building. I don't know if anyone else thinks that might be a building up there, but I don't know. I can't see very crisp shadows like these other ones. I'm not going to map it for now. Okay, let's have a look up here. I've got some buildings here. Um, these are okay. These map ones, I'm just going to square them. They probably are squared already. Let's just square them. Uh, I had this building up here, which wasn't mapped. So I'm going to map this building. So I'm adding in these missing buildings. What I'm doing here is I'm really completing the square and making sure it's absolutely finished and it's absolutely accurate. Uh, might want to rotate this one. See, it's slightly, might want to move it. It's been slightly mapped where the, where the shadows on the ground here, it's been mapped slightly. If you want to look underneath existing mapped objects, you can press W on your keyboard. It turns on wireframe mode. So I can have a look here. It's been mapped slightly where the shadow is, is falling on the ground. So I'm gonna move this building slightly to have a better fit, there we go. These buildings here, okay. These have an issue uh, and the issue is that they have a shared node on the corner here. And I can see that, I can see a gray node there. That's the shared node. Again, that causes a real issue. If I try and move this building, it stretches the other building. So this needs to be resolved. I'm going to come back to that a bit later. The next thing I'm going to show you is the automated check of buildings. Uh, I'm sorry, the automated check of mapping issues. Okay. So let's just map these two other buildings. They need to be mapped. I'm kind of getting there with a square. Okay. How do we do the automated check of issues? And we can do that by clicking on this, this little triangular icon with a um, exclamation mark in the middle of it on the right hand side here. You'll also press I on your keyboard. It opens up the issues panel. Now, this by default isn't that helpful. It shows you all issues in my edits, so in your edits, so just in the edits you've made, and in your view. You're going to want to switch this to everything, so it's checking not just your edits, but the mapping that was done beforehand. And you might want to select also everywhere, okay? Now, this is showing me the warnings, showing me the list of issues. This is like an automated check. Now, this won't pick up everything, but it is useful. It's showing me here building crosses building. I might not have spotted that. Let's click on it. You can click on it and it jumps to the offending object. So this is one where the building is overlapping with the other building. And actually both of these issues are both of these buildings. So it's showing me two warnings. It's showing me the, both of these issues. I can now fix this by closing that panel. Let's just move these corners into better positions to make sure they're not overlapping. Okay, that's a bit better now. That wasn't very well mapped by whoever mapped it. Let's square the corners. And this one, I think probably happy with, it's just in the middle there. Um, again, I can go on wireframe mode, W, just to check. Uh, these buildings look like they've been well mapped, I think. Um, there are a couple of buildings down here. You might ask what we do with buildings that touch the border or the, the edge of a square, the pink area. Um, so I did say at the start, we only map inside of our pink boundary, but there's an exception to that rule. If a building touches your boundary, you map the building. If the majority of the building is inside of your area. So like that, and you map it to completion. If the majority is inside of your neighbor's area, leave your neighbor to map the building, okay? Probably have some buildings here. These are pretty unclear. I don't know. Let's just, let's put a building here. Um, again, someone shout out if you think I'm, I think I got that wrong, right? Probably would imagine that's a building. That might also be a building. It's quite tricky. This imagery is not great, okay? Now, one thing to say about those issues that came up. The issues, let's click them again, issues. It says now everything looks fine. That's not true, actually. This down here is an issue. 
this building is connected to the other building. So the issues panel doesn't always work for everything. It works for some stuff, but it's not gonna show you everything. Um, so you, you will need to check carefully the data that's been added. So you will need to just select the objects, check you can see there aren't joined corners like this, check that you can't see unsquared buildings. The issues won't tell you about unsquared buildings. So if buildings don't have squared corners, it won't tell you about that. It won't tell you if there are unmapped buildings. It doesn't know if there are unmapped buildings. You have to decide that. You have to find those unmapped buildings. So the issue is, although it's a good automated check, it won't pick up everything. Another thing you can also do is activate uh, the um, uh, some more layers in the map data panel on the right hand side here. Shortcut F on your keyboard. So click map data. Um, I can activate these other issues layers by clicking on them. So some of these are useful. Keep right, I can activate. I can click that. Improve OSM, I can click that. And Osmos issues, I can click that. Um, now this will flag now on on any of the data, it's not actually showing me any here, um, but it will flag automatically if there are any issues. I wonder actually, let's just check it out. Let's do it over the building. No, it's not doing it immediately. Um, it doesn't do it immediately, um, but I always recommend uh, activating those additional layers on the right hand side, keep right, improve SM and Osmos, and they will show you little icons on the map where there are issues. Um, I can't see any of those. Um, again, it's not picking up this issue here, so I need to fix this. Um, and to fix an issue here where you have a joined node here, right click on either of the objects you want to disconnect and select the disconnect icon. It's like arrows in both directions. Okay, I can select disconnect. That now disconnects that node, but I can see it's changed color to white, but problem is it's now overlapping because it's where it was sitting on top of the other one where it's connected, it's now overlapping. So it's not connected, but they're now sitting on top of each other, they're overlapping. I can just fix this by right clicking on this one and moving it. And now let's move them into better positions and square the corners finally. Square the corners of this, make sure they're squared. I think I'm getting there, I think I'm, I'm pretty much happy. I think I'm gonna map this as a small building here, again, making sure not to join that corner. I'm getting my edits way up. This is bad territory, I'm way over 10 edits. I need to press save, so I'm gonna press upload after pressing save. Remember, keep an eye on that number in the upper right hand corner. And I think I would mark the square as well mapped now. And it, it took me kind of 15 minutes to fix those issues. So it's sort of on the mark there. Um, we are not responsible uh, because we're mapping a project here, which involves mapping only buildings we are not responsible for improving roads okay so if you see other mapped objects you're not responsible for improving anything else that's been added to the map okay you're not responsible because we're only mapping buildings you can see this road here maybe i would move it maybe i would think that this could be straightened out a bit or it could be repositioned or retagged i'm not going to worry about that because i'm not we're not mapping roads i can ignore it the one thing to say though is you will see occasionally um, with beginner mappers, you will see occasionally if they are mapping buildings near a road, they will mistakenly overlap a road or join to a road. So for example, if this was a building here, you might see them snap to a road like this, it's quite easy to do. And again, that causes a big issue, just as the, the buildings snap to each other causes an issue. If I try and move this road, sorry, if I try and move this building, it moves the whole road with it, it's a real issue. Also, um, so to fix this, simply right click it and select disconnect, just as we did before for those overlapping buildings. Um, one thing you also see occasionally from beginner map is you'll see um, buildings overlapping roads like that completely. So they'll map over the top of a road. That causes a real issue and they'll need to fix that. You'll need to fix it by just moving, moving the building. So this is the instance where you will occasionally be kind of interacting with a road if, is if a map is, has mistakenly overlapped it or connected with it, okay? The, the other instance is occasionally what you'll see is someone might have mapped a road inaccurately. They might have mapped it straight through a settlement like that. Um, by mistake, they might have dragged a node or something. If a road is mistakenly running through buildings that need to be mapped, you'll need to reposition the road um, because the buildings cannot and should not overlap the roads because there's real issues. Okay? So that's another instance where you might feel empowered to edit um, an object which you've not been asked to actually map, okay? Now I'm gonna save my work. I think this is fully validated. I'm happy with this now. Um, so 
I'm going to mark it as well mapped on the right hand side here. And when I've selected it's well mapped, this is where I come back to comments again. So comments, really important for giving feedback to mappers. Now, as I was thinking through what I was doing there, as I was thinking through what I had to do to improve this square, as I was making those improvements, I was making mental notes. What could the mapper have done to improve their work? And this is where I should leave that information. So I want to notify the mapper who marked the square as complete. And this is kind of a bit of a joke because if I go to history now, this is how you check who's marked the square as complete. I go to history and I can see out on activities, I can see S Colchester marked this as mapped two hours ago. So user S Colchester, that happens to be, to be me. Uh, that's because there were no tasks mapped in this area. I wanted to set up a kind of example task. But this is where you would leave a comment to the person who marked the square as mapped. So I kept that stuff in mind that I had to fix up. And here I would leave a comment and I do that by adding an at here to notify the user at. And I put in here S Colchester. And after a few characters, it should find that username S Colchester. And here I leave this feedback. So S Colchester, um, well mapped. So I try and recommend people to kind of sandwich any feedback kind of more negative feedback within some positive comments. Because remember, remember, we're really trying to encourage people to continue mapping here. So don't just give them a kind of hard, a kind of hard, this is, this is what was bad, you need to improve it next time. It's very disheartening for new mappers to see that. They all make mistakes, we all make mistakes. I made mistakes early on when I was mapping. Um, and so getting encouraging feedback is really useful. So for example, well mapped, um, but please remember, so what was wrong in that square? So buildings were connected to each other or overlapping. Please remember to zoom right in. Zoom right in when you are mapping buildings. This will ensure that they do not connect or overlap. It's not, um, again, sandwich it with something reassuring at the end. Um, I fix this. I fix this, but please keep mapping. Okay. So we have encouraging, a bit of an encouragement at the start and end. In the middle, I'm saying, this is what you did wrong. This is how you can improve, okay? And by putting at username, that notifies that user. They will get an email, and that's an opted out of emails. It tells them that they have a notification. They will see the bell in the upper right hand corner next to the username. It turns red, it means they have a notification. They will see that notification. They will see the feedback. They will read that feedback. They will hopefully implement the feedback you've given them. Um, and I've seen this happen, and this is how you catch mistakes. Early on, you stop people from running away with these errors, <clears throat> mapping lots more tasks. Okay. Now I'm actually not going to submit this. I'm not going to select submit task now because this is not, this is against the rules. I'm validating my own work here. I'm not going to do this. I'm just all pretend I'm going to get rid of this. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to save my work and actually just select stop validation here. So if you run out of time, if you want to just stop validating a task, you can always select stop validation. You don't have to mark it as well mapped or not well mapped. Now it's great to leave a comment when you've marked a square as well mapped and you're giving them some feedback. If you're marking a square as not well mapped and your marking is invalid, you have to leave feedback. So if you're selecting no, if you've gone into a square and you think it's gonna take you longer, 15 minutes to fix, and you're selecting no here and you're submitting it as not well mapped, you must leave something in that text box. That will give direction to whoever then opens up that task later on as to what they need to do, what, what's missing, what needs to be fixed, they will see that. If you don't leave anything there, you're just saying this is badly mapped and not telling anyone why, which is not useful at all. So please always, if you're marking a square as not well mapped, leave a comment in there. Please try and leave a comment every time you mark a square as well mapped. And try and think when you're, when you're fixing up um, stuff that needs to be fixed, think carefully about what feedback you can give. I don't overwhelm them. so. Um, if, there, if there's a kind of two or three things they got wrong, um, maybe less of two or three things. If it's kind of like five or six things, 
Um, you don't you don't want to leave a very long message in here, which is kind of very wordy. Um, try and focus on a couple of the main things and then try and validate some of the other tasks I've worked on. So I'm actually going to select stop validation here. All the work that I've done isn't lost here, it's, it stays. Um, I want to show you now how another way to select tasks to validate. Okay. So so far, the way I've shown you is just to zoom in and click on one. That's kind of the that's kind of the slightly ham-fisted way of selecting tasks to map. An alternative way of doing it, um, selecting tasks to validate, an alternative way of doing it is to select on the on the left hand side here, under tasks, you can select ready for validation. This is useful because when you select ready for validation here, you can select by most recently updated. And this will show you the most recently marked tasks as ready for validation. So if you want to pick off people that have been marking squares recently as finished, this is how to do this. Um, so we kind of would slightly want to be keeping an eye on this um, in the next few minutes because some of Tom's group will have been marking their squares as ready for validation that could be picked off. Okay, so I hope you've been mapping away as I've been describing this. Um, again, um, don't jump to validation immediately. Um, it takes effort, it takes, it takes practice. You can't really give feedback to people unless you know what it's like to map. Um, you can't give feedback, you can't tell them what to do unless you know what to, unless you know what to tell them what to do. So continue mapping. Um, and I would say maybe if towards the end of this uh, long mapping event, I think 23 hours or something, near the end of that, if you feel like you are really picking up errors other people are making and you feel maybe ready to step into validation, give it a go, give it a go. Um, but I would say practice a lot up to that point mapping. Um, I know we're all we're well versed with, with um, geospatial data and, and so on, but mapping in OpenStreetMap, uh, mapping in the ID editor we're using is, is quite a unique experience. It's not, it's, not like, um, it's, not, it's not like anything else, I'd say. Okay. Um, another way to, to check on users as well is if you look on contributions on the right hand side here, you can, you can find beginner mappers who might be mapping quite a lot. If you set contributions, you can select here, uh, you can select here, and we go all levels on the right hand side, you can select new users. This will only show you the, the newest users who have marked squares as complete. Now it's not showing any for me now because this is brand new. No one's actually marked a new uh, square as completely mapped to use a brand new mapper yet. Um, but also I can just see, so advanced users, let's say intermediate users, I can see one there. And if I then click um, on this uh, icon here, it shows me which task this person marked as, as mapped. Um, let's have a look, beginner users. Oh, Morgan B is a beginner user. They marked four as complete. Maybe I want to focus on these. So I can maybe start with one of these. Let's have a look at Morgan's work quickly. I'm validating again. Zooming in, first impressions, pretty good. These buildings are all squared. Got a missing circular building here, though. That could be added. Got some missing rectangular buildings. So I would just off the basis of this, most of this has been done. Only a few buildings need to be added. I'm going to go ahead and validate this task. I'm not going to mark it as not well mapped. I'm going to, I'm going to validate, finish all the buildings that need to be added here. I'm going to think about the feedback I'm going to give Morgan. I'm going to say to Morgan, you could have mapped these circular buildings. I'm going to say you map, you missed some rectangular buildings. Make sure to look for shadows. But they've mapped really well here. Overall, they've mapped very well. I mean, most of the, all of the buildings are squared. It looks like all of them is, all of them are fitting the objects pretty nicely. They just mapped some buildings. They know how to map circular buildings. They mapped a circular building. Um, so that's all, all the stuff to think of when you're mapping. Thanks for your patience. I've gone through this really, really quickly. Um, I haven't been able to answer the questions in the chat. Um, you are allowed to change the offset, fix the offset when you're validating um, quickly. I'm not going to show you how to do that right now, um, but you can do that. We're running out of time. Um, you are allowed to change the offset um, as a validator. Um, fantastic. Thanks very much, everyone. And, and um, thanks for listening to me as I run through that really, really quickly. But you have the fundamentals for mapping. You have a start for validating um, once you're once you've built up your confidence, maybe have a go at validating. Uh, but, re but remember, you need to, to learn in order to, to give that feedback first. So I recommend mapping quite a lot before you start validating. Thanks so much, everyone. I think we're going to head back to the other session now.